I started mining too, but uh, sometimes you know the rules are made to be broken. But once you got your round drilled off, you put your blasting caps in the holes. They looked something like this, only a little better shape than this one's in. And they were numbered from one and up. And the difference between your numbers would give you milliseconds of a delay, a delay time from when one of those holes would go off till the next one would go off. So the very first hole you'd blast on that round would be that one right there. So you put a number one cap in that hole. The second hole would be that, that hole there. So you put a number two cap in that hole. Then a number three cap in that hole right there. Number four cap there. That part of your round right there is the most important part there is. That's called the burner to cut. If that didn't break out right, the rest of your round wouldn't break properly. Then you'd start putting in higher number of caps. Every row you work your way over to the outside, out, right out to the outside here. Same going over this way. The very second to last row of holes you'd blast would be these five here called back holes. You could put the same number of cap in that hole as this one. Higher number of cap in here, and the same number of cap here, and then a higher number of cap in that middle by itself. The very last holes you'd blast would be these five across the bottom here called lifters. You would put your highest number of cap in those lifters and the same number of cap in every one of those holes. So they would all go off at exactly the same time and they would actually pick up that whole muck pile and throw it back a waste so your cross shift would have room to walk in there and hang up a block and cable and scrape that round up. If you blasted these lifters ahead of these back holes, you might only have about that much room over the top of your muck pile and you wouldn't want to see your cross shift outside or downtown for at least two or three years after that. <laughs> so once you had all your caps in the holes, we blasted with what we called MCM here. It was made on the property here. It was a mixture of fertilizer, nitrogen, prills, diesel fuel, and a couple of other additives. I can't give you the whole recipe in case you go home and try and make some. <laughs> It was bagged in 50 pound bags and it would take about a bag and a half to blast that round with. We had a hopper about that square so deep would hold a bag of powder. They'd hook up your air hose to that, dump the bag of powder in it. Then it had a long plastic hose that would fit in those holes. So you slowly retract your hose on the hole as it was filling up. So once you had all your hole, everything all loaded, you'd make sure you put all your tools away in a good safe place. And then you would tie these leg wires of your blasting caps together with this orange stuff here called V-line. It took a detonation to set these off. So this was the detonation that would set those leg wires off. And in order to set that V-line off, you had to have a detonation to do that too. So you put a blasting cap on it like this. That's an electric blasting cap. So we all carried one of these things here that looked like this, called a mini blaster. So at 2 o'clock on day shift is when you'd be all ready to blast it. Until 1972, we never had something like this to come to if there was any kind of a disaster in the mine. Not a good place, safe place to come to, or a good place to eat our lunches, even. Uh, the biggest enemy in the hard rock mine here was if the power went out, the ventilation could reverse itself, and you could get carbon monoxide in that way. Or if the fire broke out, there's a chance to get carbon monoxide in that way, too. Well, because it would all work with just our cap lamps and air tools most of the time, you would never know if the power went out. So we had kind of notify us if there would either one of those things happen. was down in the power house where the compressed air is generated. They would put a gas in the airplane called the methyl mercaptor. It smells like leaky natural gas or propane, the same stuff that's in that, actually. So if either one of those happened, they would put that in the airline. And if you smelt that country airline, you would hurriedly shut down and go to the nearest fresh air place you could think of and stay there until somebody come along and told you it was okay to leave. Well, 
1970, some company came up with this thing. It's quite a good thing. This is called a self rescuer. And what this would do, it would convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. And it would last for 45 minutes in a contaminated atmosphere with this. Probably save your life. Well, they're quite heavy and quite bulky, and the place they carry them was on your belts, where they'd be handy to get. But we had this battery to carry around for our plate, which is really heavy too, and a couple of wrenches and some other stuff on our belts. And you knew very well wherever you put that on your belt, if you slip and fell, you were going to fall on it and get hurt. So being the good, safe workers we all were, we didn't want to take a chance on getting hurt. So we told the company what they could do with these things, where they could put them. <laughs> They come back at us with two answers. They told us first of all they weren't going to put them where we told them to. <laughs> and secondly, if we were caught in a working place without one, our paycheck would be waiting for us when we got downtown. So we reluctantly carried them because we couldn't wait for it. And it happened to a number of guys. They slipped and fell. Landed on that thing, got hurt. At least they were still breathing. And they got them in the mines in the States at the same time we got them here. But all they did there is they put them in racks on the different levels where the skip was, where the guys would get off in the different levels. And if something happened, you were supposed to get to that fresh air place and grab one of these and see if we might. Well, in June of 1972, a big fire broke out in the big mine down there. Ninety-three of the miners had went home in daylight. So two mine rescue teams went from this mine here. And two from the coal mines went down to see if they could help rescue anybody. At that time, they used this machine here called an airlock machine. That's filled with liquid oxygen, so it's nice and smooth to breathe. But the drawback of it was it couldn't be shut off, and it was only good for two hours because it had to be back up in fresh air again. But that was the best they had in 1972.
This is a modern one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he was bathtub in here. <laughs> 